But yeah, today we're going to present some of the um, some of the benefits, some great initial results that we're seeing, and uh, also some of the challenges that we're facing that we're going to continue to work through. Hopefully by next year, at this time, we will have worked through a lot of them, and we'll have some some great numbers to share. So I'm going to skip through the um, more comprehensive intros. We'll have the slides available for folks um, that are interested. Uh, can I have a show of hands? For anybody here that does not know what vector search is, I would like a brief overview of vector search. Is everybody fairly confident, familiar with their? It's a big topic today. RAG, generative AI, things have exploded. So vector search has is, is really grown in importance. Um, so I think we can probably skip or at least breeze through our brief introduction. We're gonna, I'm going to give a brief introduction of, uh, of QVS, uh, and then we're going to talk about the Lucene QVS connector, um, including some benchmarks and some plans. And then we'll try to have time for questions uh, at the end. So um, breezing past the vector search piece, did you want to, did you want to sure. just do a very brief? Yeah. So um, in vector search, uh, uh, data types, uh, data of different types can be represented into a sequence of numbers called vector embeddings. Uh, and so vector search is a data retrieval uh, uh, approach where uh, similar uh, vectors uh, are, are returned using approximate nearest neighbor search uh, algorithms. Uh, so on this, on this slide, uh, that's what we have tried to show. Uh, visually, uh, we have uh, set our different types of data uh, and uh, using embedding model, we have the vector uh, representations for those. Uh, and then approximate, using approximate nearest neighbor search algorithms, query in the same form transformed into uh, a vector representation is used, and uh, similar relevant uh, re results are returned. Uh, qu uh, a few applications of vector search, one of them being uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, so this approach tries to uh, solve the uh, shortcomings of using uh, pre-trained large language models uh, where the, uh, uh, the results uh, returned from the LLMs could be out of date or um, not, uh, not exactly as needed. So what, what RAG does is it uh, uses uh, 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 up-to-date uh, facts from an external source, combines it, and uh, uh, uses that to uh, get more relevant and up-to-date uh, 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 re responses for uh, the query. Um, another application of vector search is uh, content-based retrieval. In this uh, uh, visual, uh, we see an example of uh, reverse image search. Uh, in this, um, again, uh, the images that uh, should be searchable, uh, have their vector represent, uh, embeddings indexed, and, in, and, and a query image uh, whose, vector, uh, who, whose vector embedding uh, is used uh, uh, to apply the same uh, 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 approach of using uh, ANN algorithms to uh, get uh, relevant uh, results. Uh, in this case, there could be similar images that the user is looking for. Um, and, uh, uh, finally, another application of vector search is hybrid search. Uh, certain cases uh, justify the use of uh, vector search and uh, the traditional keyword search uh, and using um, uh, something called as a re reciprocal uh, rank fusion approach. Uh, we get a unified and relevant uh, result out of that. Uh, I think this is a good point for Corey to yep. uh, take forward. Sounds good. Afterwards. Thanks, Rebecca. Uh, yeah. So. GPUs, when are they good, when are they bad? Um, a, a good way to think about GPUs is that uh, you know, CPUs tend to be like a Corvette, very fast per core. GPUs tend to be more like a tour bus, get a lot of people someplace very quickly by taking more people at a time. Um, but core for core, it's usually not going to be as fast as a CPU. Uh, GPUs tend to be really, really good at things that are compute bound, which means that they're not spending most of their time loading from memory locations. Uh, we tend to. Um, munch the memory locations in, into certain I.O. formats for different I.O. patterns uh, so that we can maximize compute. But uh, both have mechanisms for um, running uh, code in, in parallel through the use of threads. In the GPU side, uh, we use what we call CUDA streams to be able to overlap uh, CUDA kernels. Um, CPUs tend to be really good at like complete random access. GPUs have a cost for that. You can still do random access with GPUs. We can be smart about how we do random access with GPUs, but it's usually better when we have contiguous memory locations. 
I'm going to give a brief introduction of QVS. So back in 2019, we released a software suite, fully open source, called Rapids. Um, for those who may not have heard of Rapids, they're GPU accelerated variants of popular Pi Data libraries. Like we have a GPU accelerated variant of Scikit-Learn, which I was um, one of the developers of. Uh, we have a uh, GPU accelerated variant of Pandas called QDF. Uh, we have QGraph, or kind of our, our network X variant. Um, QVS doesn't have a direct variant in the Pi Data ecosystem. We have integrated QVS into phase. Um, but as we've continued expanding our data processing capabilities on Rapids, we've started going lower level, so not just focusing on Python, but also focusing on C++ APIs and C APIs and focusing on integrating with databases, for instance, instead of just um, you know, using it as a dispatch behind um, other Python libraries. The tech stack doesn't look unlike other uh, Rapids libraries. They're all built on the CUDA core, so a lot of CUDA libraries involved there. Um, we had, uh, a few years back, started realizing how expensive it is to build this really uh, compute-intensive code. And so we wanted to minimize that by building, building blocks that we could reuse to build other things, um, specifically for machine learning and graph processing algorithms. So we built a library called Raft. Initially, we had a bunch of approximate nearest neighbors algorithms in Raft. We've since pulled those out into their own dedicated library that we call QVS. That's pronounced QVS, uh, the CUDA vector search library. Uh, that contains routines for vector search, clustering, and distance computations. One thing that has come out of this library is a completely novel graph-based vector search algorithm that we call Kagra. Um, Kagra overcomes some of the shortcomings when trying to, for instance, port other graph-based algorithms for vector search onto the GPU, like HNSW, for instance. You can parallelize the construction of an HNSW graph. Uh, Kagra can take a bunch of vectors and do it all in one big batch compute um, computation. And this is really the power here. We couldn't take the way that another CPU-based algorithm works and just directly port that to the GPU and expect great performance. So instead, we had to think of a new way to do it. And this is a new algorithm. It is not simply a HNSW for the GPU. Um, it is not hierarchical. It is navigable. It is not small world. Um, there's what the acronyms for HNSW stand for. So it has enough navigable properties that it creates a really nice graph. But um, it can be both uh, built on and searched on the GPU really efficiently. A lot of our users of QVS are super interested in index building. It's a heavy compute task. It's easy to offload to GPUs. So naturally, that's something that we've really been focused on. And we're seeing great performance results from that. We noticed, especially in like LLM workloads, where the, um, the number of dimensions tend to, to grow pretty large, uh, that, that's a, that just increases the gap between CPU and GPU for index building. Um, also note that uh, these benchmarks were done using all the threads possible in the CPU. So, and we, we tend to test on some, some pretty beefy CPUs, and we still see this uh, type of behavior. Because there's been so much interest in index building on the CPU or on the GPU, and because so many people today with vector search deployments are using HNSW on the CPU, uh, it was a natural fit for us to um, expand our capabilities so that we could essentially convert a CAGR graph into an HNSW graph, build on the GPU, convert to the CPU for deployment. Um, there's been a lot of interest in this, a lot of excitement around it. It works really well. There is some prior research, too, that, that, that backs this up. But we have been finding that in larger dimensions, as the dimensionality increases, I mean, we're talking into the thousands, um, HNSW actually starts to hinder performance, that, that hierarchical layer. Um, and so we're finding that when we convert the CAGR graph into an HNSW graph, the navigability is not only really, really good, uh, but we're also seeing in this bottom chart here on the right um, better performance when searching the CAGR graph with HNSW algorithm than um, searching the HNSW graph. Cost efficiency comes up a lot. People think GPUs, and they think expensive. Um, and we're um, constantly seeing that that's, that's not always the case. In fact, it's, it's, it's oftentimes not the case, especially in this world where we actually can really benefit from having heavy compute um, and being able to do that in big batch operations. Um, and so a small case study that we did here, uh, yes, the GPU is more expensive per hour, but you can do things a lot faster. And as a result, when you can offload computations like index builds to the GPU, then you end up saving money. So without cost normalizing, you could think about this as you know, building 21x faster for 68% higher cost. Right? If you cost normalize, you still get 12.5x faster, um, faster build. 
And so we always owe it to ourselves to look at how these scale as we continue to add GPUs to the problem. The vector search problem tends to be trivially scalable, so we can shard it across multiple GPUs if we have to in order to scale. There's other ways to scale, too. But seeing that nice linear scale is what we want to see here, because that also allows us to make predictions in terms of um, massive scale workloads, right? If we have terabytes, for instance, of data, which we'll see in a second. What this chart is not meant to show is that uh, all of the disk and network I.O. in the ingest portion, which is in the gray, just continues to get worse. That wasn't the purpose of this. The purpose of this was to see the linear scaling for the actual GPU. We did not increase the bandwidth of the disk or network. Um, so therefore, we would naturally see that that's going to increase, too. Um, so all this kind of leads up to this huge benchmark that we did uh, shortly before our uh, GTC conference in the fall, um, in the middle of March. Um, where we've integrated QVS into Milvis as kind of our first end-to-end -end litmus test. And we wanted to see how far we could push Milvis. A lot of people think, OK, GP, you've got to fit everything into the available compute. It's just not possible to be able to build all of these indexes for you know, two and a half terabytes um, using the GPU. But it turns out we can. We can do it really efficiently. Um, and we can do it really fast. So this is using eight GPUs in a DGX H100. We were able to build two and a half terabytes of embeddings. This is uh, each 1,000 dimensions. This is a ton of embeddings, but it's simulating what it would look like if you were to take um, one terabyte of raw documents, parse them into embeddings, run them through all of your um, encoder models. You end up with about two and a half terabytes of embeddings. Um, and yeah, so based on the weak scaling numbers that I showed prior, it, we estimate that this would take about uh, nearly a week on the CPU. And this is just for the index building. This isn't for that ingest portion. That overhead um, is being encountered across the board right now. And um, I'm going to go back up here real quick. Um, actually, this guy here shows it well. So these overheads here show you that you know prior to us putting the indexing on the GPU, um, the disk and network overheads were not the bottleneck. When we put, for instance, the bottom line on this chart, when we put that on the GPU, now our bottleneck is getting the data into the database. And that's what we're starting to focus on now. And we have technologies that we, that we feel are, are, are going to be important to this. Uh, it's going to require a more end-to-end -end acceleration. Um, but that's where we are today with QVS. We have a growing list of algorithms. Uh, we support all the basic algorithms you would expect to see in something like phase. Uh, but keep in, in mind that QVS is primarily a GPU-focused library. Uh, we're not planning on releasing you know, CPU, GPU interoperability. You would use Lucene or you would use um, something like Phase for that. Um, however, we are integrating into libraries like Lucene. So you're going to continue seeing that. And we are also working to enable that um, build on the GPU and then be able to serialize that into a universal format that can then be loaded into you know, choose your library for, for deployment. So now, Vivek, you want to cover the Lucene QVS connector? So um, yeah. Um, so while I'm going through this section, I think uh, uh, we can have a one-line introduction to what Lucene is. It's a text-based uh, search engine library written in Java. Uh, comes with a host of uh, features, uh, faceting, uh, distributed search, fuzzy query and a whole lot more. Uh, in addition to what Lucene does, um, in vector search, um, uh, the paper on HNSW uh, showed up in around uh, 2016. And uh, if, I mem if my memory is, uh, if my memory is right, um, uh, HNSW implementation got in to Lucene in 9.0. Um, so Lucene, uh, so, so Lucene QVS, uh, so uh, HNSW does uh, a good job uh, when it comes to vector search in Lucene, uh, but with uh, increasing dimensionality and cardinality, uh, the performance may, 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 may degrade. And uh, um, indexing uh, seems to be a fairly parallelizable job. Uh, so uh, that l led us to a thought like, maybe we can uh, uh, use the um, power given by GPU and QVS to uh, find a better way. And so Lucene QVS uh, connector uh, library that we are working on currently is, uh, uh, is, is, an, is an attempt to uh, leverage what L GPU and L uh, QVS can help in achieving uh, when it comes to performance around vector search 
uh, in Lucene ecosystem. Uh, the discussion on this uh, started around August 2023 um, in the mailing list and then uh, work on this initiative started in December 2023. Um, uh, 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 in addition to myself, uh, uh, folks working uh, on this project are Ishan Chattopadhyay and Noble Paul uh, who are active in the Lucene and uh, solar uh, communities. Um, so uh, a quick overview of how we think Lucene QVS connector library can work. So in this visual uh, client code can be any application or an, uh, on an, or an or a search uh, platform that wishes to utilize the capability uh, that Lucene QVS provides in vector, sp uh, vector search uh, using uh, uh, GPUs and uh, uh, QVS library. Um, Lucene QVS sits mainly on top of two APIs, the Lucene API and uh, the QVS API. QVS API is uh, the, the version that we are using is uh, in C++. So uh, since uh, the Lucene ecosystem is in Java, uh, we needed JNI uh, uh, layer as well to interact with that. Um, uh, as before, Lucene, uh, all the indexes are, uh, are, are, are go, going to uh, going onto the disk for persistence. Uh, what in in this case, um, when we are using uh, GPUs and QVS for building Kagra indexes, uh, the indexes are built and searched on on the GPU, and they are persisted. Uh, in the Lucene uh, segments only. So all those uh, bytes flow around, uh, you know, when we need to search, uh, the, the Kagra indexes are loaded on the GPU. Uh, when an index is built, uh, it needs to be uh, persisted. After a commit, uh, those indexes built on GPU go back into the Lucene index, uh, persisted on the disk. Um, uh, uh, a rather closer look on the details of of the current implementation of Lucene QVS. Uh, this visual uh, tries to uh, outline uh, the main moving components and the classes uh, that have been written and the relationship um, of, of 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 these uh, components um, in the Lucene API. Um, so I think the codec is the is the is a good starting point. Uh, QVS codec uh, sits on top of the Lucene 9.9 codec. Uh, it provides all the capabilities that Lucene 9.9 codec provides. Uh, but in case of a KNN float vector field, it uh, ex it creates an instance of the QVS vectors format, uh, which then uh, eventually uh, returns the uh, instances of QVS vectors reader and writer. Uh, search on segments uh, happen in the QVS vectors reader class, uh, and um, the the, uh, the, uh, the flush and merge act uh, implementation uh, exists in the writer class. Um, the results are collected in QVS KNN collector class. Uh, that's where the implementation is. Uh, results uh, ultimately uh, uh, are collected in the merge leaf results method that exists in the QVS vector query class. Uh, I'm just trying to recall from what I remember from the code. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I hope I'm recalling it properly. Uh, and then uh, finally, QVS field vector writer is the class that holds uh, the field vectors until, temporarily until uh, they get committed. Uh, and so in addition to this, um, we certainly need to talk to the, 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 the QBS layer as well through JNI. So a few methods that I can recall are uh, um, uh, like load, loading index, uh, building indexes, and getting top K values uh, from, from, from the JNI layer. Um, yeah, uh, 
and then uh, we can uh, touch on the benchmarks uh, that we are seeing. Um, so this, uh, this slide shows uh, indexing performance um, on 768 and 2048 dimensions. We used Wikipedia data set. Um, this is multi-threaded inde indexing. And so if I look closely, um, we used uh, H100 um, and uh, on a recall of 99%, we are seeing a 34x increase uh, when we are comparing HNHW and CAGRA. Um, so one of the reasons why we compare based on recall level, especially in the ML world, right? And this is kind of where ML kind of has to inject itself into this database world, which creates this neat kind of intersection. Um, you know, in the machine learning world, I could build you a garbage model and say it took zero time to build that performed like worse than random chance, right? And so this is also something that, uh, you know, we see these curves where people are, um, you know, benchmarking the, the best possible case for different parameter combinations. You know, we, we've done many of those too, but specifically when we're reporting build times, we make sure that we're always careful to report build times in terms of um, the recall that that parameter set could potentially achieve. And this is oftentimes not the default parameters that are in um, whatever database integration. Um, and so here, we're, we're kind of showing that you know, the gap continues to increase, not just with the, the recall level. And these are, these are recall levels that we seem to get targeted often by users. They're interested in over 90, but then some, in, some users are also interested in the 95 and the 99, since you can usually squeeze some extra performance out of there, depending on your latency needs. But um, this isn't just exclusive to H100. We were benchmarking this on the RTX A6000, like workstation um, class GPUs, benchmarking this on consumer grade GPUs, the RTX 4090. So this isn't a sales pitch for H100, right? They, we're seeing the same behavior. We're seeing the same gap. Um, we're, we're also comparing against CPUs that are at least performance comparable. So you know, a dual socket SPR Intel CPU um, on a DGX, I think, is more fair to compare against a GPU like the H100 um, than taking an H100 and comparing it against, you know, a um, really cheap GPU in, in the cloud. Um, but we see this gap continuing to grow with dimensionality, continues to grow with the, the number of embeddings that you're putting into the, into the index, and then um, also with the recall. And so to follow on, we wanted to make sure that we did our diligence, too, and didn't just benchmark extremely large number of dimensions. So 128 dimensions, we're still showing really great performance. The gap is smaller than with like 2,000 dimensions, obviously, but still showing a great speed up so far. And this is end-to-end -end indexing performance. This is, I put a bunch of um, documents in. This is the time it takes for each commit of the documents to be able to ingest the vectors in um, and until they're ready to be searched. Um, and each of these benchmarks we also ran with um, 32 threads. Did you want to go overhead the yes. overheads? Yes. So uh, what this slide is trying to tell us is we are, uh, we are observing a lot of overheads. Uh, in addition to the core stuff that, uh, that, that justifies the time taken, uh, there are certain overheads that are listed that um, we we, we are observing and we are actively working on um, these numbers uh, are based on, uh, as mentioned on the slide, are based on 100K vectors, 768 dimension, um, and a no merge policy. Um, we are actively working on this. Uh, so these numbers, I mean, the, the, the hope is that uh, as we are getting rid of unnecessary overheads, uh, the performance and the value out of this will 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 increase. Uh, so this is just uh, you know for the sake of transparency. These are the the numbers that we are seeing right now, and we are working on it. One one thing I want to point out too, real quick, because I, I noticed new merges on this slide. So these all use a non-trivial merge scheme too. So this is also merging on the CPU and merging on the GPU, and then it's it's. So these results include those merges. And we'll define what, what trivial and non-trivial is. Uh, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's ahead in one of the slides. Um, so again, query performance. I think these, um, so um, as you can see, um, 
These are fresh numbers. Yeah, we these are very just fresh. got these before. before like like before two hours before, so it's yeah. like uh, <laughs> folks throwing slides behind yeah. the scenes and you know comes as a surprise. But um, yeah, we were seeing real problems when it came to search uh, uh, querying, um, and Ishan did some uh, clever code changes, and then we got a message, and uh, so we are seeing an improvement. Again, the, these numbers are very fresh out of the oven right now, um, and uh, you know, as I said, we expect uh, these numbers to to even uh, to improve even better that, that that's that's what we're looking forward to uh, one of the challenges that we have on the gpu right is that latency and and memory bandwidth and memory speeds um, so often one query at a time you wouldn't generally think would be the most fair comparison on a gpu when you've got to copy the data into the gpu memory before you can even run compute but our CAGR algorithm does massively parallelize the actual, each individual query. So if you pass it one query at a time, it's going to try to parallelize those distance computations as much as possible. So we do still see an improvement in latency, even at one at a time. But really, to unlock the power of GPUs for search, you want to be doing um, multiple queries at a time, batching queries as much as possible, doing dynamic batching so that you can collect queries that are passed in at different times and maybe um, dispatch them on a, on a latency budget or a size budget. So this is all work for follow-on. Um, right now, the results are looking promising, which is um, kind of a delight to all of us. So we at least have something in the meantime that looks, that looks good. Oh, OK. So I think this is uh, a variation where uh, we're using th single threads. Uh, single thread, my bad. Um, and we are seeing a 10x improvement on RTX 4090, a 10x improvement on A6000. And uh, similarly, in the case of um, that? Um, yeah, it looks like these were comparing the AMD. Oh yeah, Red Ripper and the 97950. Yeah, um, whole lot of numbers, um, and uh, we expect more of these in coming weeks. Um, the bottom left, you want to see. Um, He put the he put the green as H and S W. <laughs> so the blue actually on the bottom left, the blue is you want to see the blue be smaller, and that's that's 10x smaller, and you want to see the the blue on the on the right be be larger. <laughs> that's yeah. Um, Fresh off the press. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, so talking about the challenges, uh, yeah, as we mentioned, we are there are overheads. Some of them are justified. Uh, a, a few of them are not and they should be we, we should be able to handle them hopefully in in coming weeks um, so as I mentioned before already like once we optimize uh, overheads and reduce them as far as we can um, we should improve we should we should observe better better uh, performance numbers the next important thing that uh, we would like to highlight is the merge operation so currently what we have right now is as at best a workaround, uh, to be honest. There are two approaches to merges right now, trivial and non-trivial, we just named those. Trivial, in, in, in this case, when a merge happens, for all the, candidate, for all the segments that are being merged, uh, index, index, uh, index bytes and raw vectors are picked up and thrown in, uh, in an uncompressed archive uh, uh, as a payload, and that's what we call as trivial. Uh, merge. It's not doing anything, actually. Uh, that's why it's a workaround. It has its problems, uh, especially when it comes to querying. And then the other option we have right now is non-trivial. In this, what we do is we, 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 we use the raw vectors, re-index, and then throw that in the segment payload. Uh, this has an additional cost, but it handles the, the, the degradation of querying as compared to the first option. Again, as I mentioned, these are just workarounds. Um, we plan to work, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we'll have to put a lot of efforts in finding a better and a more, a more acceptable way when it comes to mergers. So a um, few things on the roadmap. As I mentioned, merge at this point 
to be honest, is just a workaround. Uh, we'll be working, we'll be collaborating on this, and hopefully we'll come up with an algorithm and an impl implementation and fix the merge issue, reducing overheads, as I already mentioned. Um, more benchmarks, as we have mentioned, uh, you know, numbers are changing, folks are throwing slides behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> we expect uh, more benchmarks, thorough tests, and, you know, on a different on, on different sets of uh, on different data sets, dimensions, and hardware. Um, one important thing that we are not able to uh, to to capitalize on is the limitation in Lucene, where batch querying is is something that you know that doesn't seem likely right now, right now given the given the structure of what we see in Lucene. On the other hand. Uh, G batch querying on GPU, I think we can almost guarantee that that those numbers will really look good. But the problem is there is constraint on the API side in Lucene that it's not allowing us to put that. Um, so maybe we need to have an open discussion. Uh, if I'm missing something, we can we can certainly chat. Uh, but yeah, if we can if 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 we, if we can have a discussion in Lucene community about this and see what we can come up with um, and, 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 let, uh, and allow that option, we can certainly leverage what QVS and GPU-based GPU vector search can do, especially in terms of batch querying. Uh, uh, it should do very well. Um, another thing on the list is uh, right now the indexing and querying is happening on GPU. We can certainly try a combination where uh, we can take advantages of both, where uh, we are indexing using GPU and searching on CPU. Uh, that's, that's something that we, we'd like to try. Um, uh, once, uh, uh, as, the, as this library is evolving, uh, we'd also like to uh, use it with uh, enterprise search platforms uh, and see how that helps. I mean, that, that's one of uh, an important, that is one of the important uh, goal of this initiative is to enable uh, uh, this uh, vector search capability uh, on different platforms, maybe with the help of this library. That's, that's one of the goals, right? Yeah, we're going to be at Community Over Code in October, and we're hoping to have this ready for then. So we're hoping some of our benchmarks can include that, and maybe Elastic, MongoDB, maybe some of these other users too. That's the hope. Yes, absolutely. Um, another thing on the list is um, hyperparameters optimization in Lucene, I think. That's what Ishan mentioned. Um, because these are machine learning models, you can end up with garbage results if you don't use good tuning parameters. And so a lot of people are finding that hyperparameter tuning is um, necessary to provide a good experience in these types of databases. So that's a natural, great way for, um, to leverage uh, GPU compute. And uh, finally, uh, support this library with a, build, uh, with a good build system. Uh, so a bit about the current uh, setup. Uh, Lucene uh, is, is Java-based, and things are pretty easy when it's just Java. But what this uh, connector library does it is, is also includes native code, C++, and some other stuff. Um, so uh, that requires uh, a build system that can uh, that can that can make that process easy, and you know we can have the the cross-platform artifacts built. Uh, uh, so for that, uh, we are in the process of evaluating. Uh, my bad. Uh, we are in the process of evaluating a, a build platform um, by Native Link. Uh, it, 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 it does solve that problem by providing seamless approach to solving those challenges. Um, a bit about the native link and uh, the current state of that project. Uh, it's in active development right now. Um, uh, native link is also being used uh, for in production systems. Um, they have uh, uh, Lucene and uh, Solar committers on their team, so it's pretty, it's pretty nice there. And uh, so, uh, if you want uh, to 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 get more information, there's a link that we have added 
uh, I think Blake Hatch is also attending this session. Uh, so maybe we can find him if you want to ch have a chat, uh, know more about it. Um, uh, yeah, please do. Um, We'd love to chat with you guys after the session too. <laughs> um, we have also added a link to a prototype that we and Native Link are working on. Um, there's a link to it. We can, uh, you can, if you're, if you're curious, you can maybe go and see the code changes and progress on that as well. Um, and finally, a few resources for the folks. Lucene QVS repository, it's, it's on GitHub. Uh, feel free to reach out there. Um, uh, know what's happening. You can see the code. Uh, please expect a few pull requests coming up uh, in, 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 in few days. Uh, we have also added a link for QVS. You can uh, go and have a look into how that looks. Um, documentation for Raft, I think that also has the link for QVS as well. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, we're in the uh, process of migrating things out yes. of Raft into QVS. So Raft is going to continue to be the primitives layer. But everything's in there right now in QVS. So things are, things are good. We just did a release. These are all free and open source too, which is awesome. We love it. And people come and give us a star and you know, start uh, opening up some issues, open up some PRs. Um, the, uh, even the NVIDIA side is all Apache 2 license as well. So. And uh, in addition to that, we have added links for the research papers. Those are pretty nice to have a look at. Um, to address the issue of overheads and to have better I.O., uh, I think we'll also look into quick I.O. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? It's a great library to, to be able to skip the, um, the CPU and being able to do data transfers on the PCI Express line. This is from Rapid itself, right? Yep. So yeah, yep. uh, we'll be doing that as well. And uh, a link to native link. Uh, uh, feel free to, re, uh, to browse through these resources, and uh, I think uh, that's it. Yeah, I questions? think we might not have quest time for questions, do we? Do we have a couple minutes? Or? Yes, you do. Yeah, awesome. I, we'll, we'll stay afterwards, though, too, yes. if any, any folks want to ask questions. A very nice presentation and very excited. I have three questions. The first question is, uh, when you are doing benchmarking against HNSW, do I understand the vector embeddings are pre-computed, so there's no inference time? So, yes, that's true. Yes. Okay, uh, that's good. The second one is, uh, do I understand correctly that uh, QVS, uh, Q, uh, Q, uh, QVS is already at a mature state, but the PyLucy integration is still developing? Yeah, uh, I would say QVS is getting to a mature state. We had our first stable release actually last Thursday, so folks can use it. It's out there. Um, we're going to continue working on it. We're going to continue improving it. Nice. And the, my third question is, any plan to integrate into more vector database, such as yes. my colleague at Qdrunt at here? I'm sorry? Yeah. Quadrant? Oh, my. Uh, Maybe you can ask. Did you say Quadrant? Yeah, yeah let's talk. We've been, we've been wanting, actually, we, we exposed a Rust API because we want, we want to integrate into Quadrant, absolutely. So right now, Milvis, um, Phase, OpenSearch from AWS, um, Oracle is looking to use. Yeah, we're any, anybody and everybody. We just want to unlock this functionality so that users have a choice. Is there any other question over there? Hello. Um, nice presentation. Uh, I have one question around the single thread graph that you mentioned. Is Kagra better even on CPU than HNSW? Like, I'm not fully sure I get the graphs. There, there really is no version of Kagra on the CPU because it was built for the GPU. But a lot of these graph-based algorithms are nothing more than a proximity graph by construction. So that's what allows us to then take the Kagra graph that we build and then put it on the CPU, for instance, in the same memory layout as HNSW, and then be able to search that on the CPU. So then all the, you know, all the caveats thereof apply right, with, with HNSW, because we literally convert that into an HNSW graph inside of HNSW lib, or inside of phase, or inside of, of what will be inside of Lucene when we have that feature. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Thanks uh, for the presentation. Thank you. Um, I have two, two questions. Uh, First one is uh, regarding your benchmarks. Did you compare with the uh, latest Java and Lucene versions? I'm uh, uh, 
um, specifically interested in the SIMD implementation of uh, Lucene. So did you compare with that one or uh, with another one? We try to. Um, do you yeah. know? I, I refer to Project Panama uh, uh, implementation in the, in the latest version. Yeah. Yeah, so we tried that. Uh, we hit a hit a roadblock there. We we tried our best before this presentation. There was some 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 issue that we got into. Uh, it it should we should we should you know. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get numbers out for that. Yeah, I will so, say that we do test against the SIMD HNSW lib for the QVS benchmarks, and we have a reproducible benchmark tool similar to ANM benchmarks, but kind of more amenable to GPUs. And, and the batching thereof that we also release. And we try to be fair and transparent uh, as uh, much okay. as possible. <laughs> if, I, if I might add a second yeah. one. A, a, and uh, do you have on the roadmap um, maybe s switching JNI to, 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 to memory segments or the, the new foreign interface uh, for foreign functions? Uh, basically, it, to, to, get, to get the data better in the, in the JVM and out and, yeah. It, yeah, I, if there's... It, I'm more of a C++ guy. I was a Java Enterprise guy, but not as much the JNI guy. So I think JNI was a natural place to kind of start here, just from my older Java background. But I understand that there's some improvements thereof, too, and some different ways of being able to expose a native interface. Can we talk after? Because I'm interested yeah. to learn what you might be able to help with. Actually, I also have a comment here. So, um, so the latest Lucene version will be Java 21. And this one is now calling also from the core of Lucene native functions. And uh, JNI would not be used anywhere there. Oh. We are using only Panama. So my strong oh, okay. recommendation is to get it at some point into Lucene as a module. Please use Panama for, uh, for the linking to native code. And at least do most of that stuff in, in Java and only call some functions outside. It should be much better than with okay. JNI. That's good to know, because yeah. right now the JNI is actually calling several C++ functions inside. And yeah. we've been talking about exposing a first class Java API. But we're trying to do that without yeah. losing performance. So we should be able to do that with Panama. Yeah, OK. Awesome. That's good to know. <laughs> well, um, I'm sorry we are out of time. Thank you very much uh, for yeah. your talk. Thanks, everyone.